It was fast, it was beautiful, and it was ahead of its time. The Concorde could fly from New York to London in just over three hours, breaking the sound barrier and soaring so high you could actually see the curve of the Earth. It felt like the future had arrived. But then, without warning, it vanished. How does a marvel like that just disappear? Was it the cost? The deafening sonic booms? Or was it simply too early for a world that wasn't ready? And here's the real question. Could something like Concorde ever return? In this episode of Built to Collapse, we dig into the story of a jet that pushed the limits of what was possible and paid the price. If you're into stories that challenge what you think you know, like and subscribe. A dream that took flight. Let's go back to the 1960s, a time when the world was full of big dreams. People were reaching for the moon, building space rockets, and imagining flying cars. It felt like anything was possible. One of the biggest dreams was flying faster than sound. Not just fast, supersonic. And two countries, Britain and France, decided to make that dream come true. They worked together and built a plane that was unlike anything the world had seen. It wasn't just fast, it was beautiful and powerful. They named it Concord. From the very beginning, Concord stood out. It had a long pointed nose, smooth wings, and engines that roared. When it finally flew in 1976, people felt like the future had truly arrived, breaking the sound barrier. So what made Concorde so special? It could fly at Mach 2.04, that's more than 2,100 kilometers per hour, or about 1,300 miles per hour. That's twice as fast as sound. Most planes fly at around 35,000 feet, but Concorde went much higher, up to 60,000 feet. From there, you could see the curve of the Earth, and the sky above looked dark blue, almost black. It felt like flying near space. A flight from New York to London took just three and a half hours, half the time of a regular plane. Only British Airways and Air France flew Concorde. And out of all the ones built, only 14 planes were used for passengers. But every time it flew, people noticed. Concorde wasn't just a plane. It was a sign of luxury, speed, and power. It made flying feel like a glimpse of the future. What it was like to fly Concorde. Flying on Concorde wasn't just about speed. It was about showing you had made it in life. The seats were small and the cabin was tight. It wasn't very roomy. But the people sitting inside? They were presidents, movie stars, rich business owners. Only the super rich could afford a ticket that cost thousands of dollars for just one trip. But for that price, you got more than just a seat. You got fancy meals, champagne, and a story to tell. It felt special, like you were part of something only a few people would ever experience. Some passengers said it felt like time travel. You could leave London in the morning and land in New York before you even left. It felt like magic. But magic isn't cheap. The hidden costs. Behind all the beauty and fame, Concorde had some big problems. Serious ones. First, it used way too much fuel. Concorde burned more than twice as much fuel per passenger as a normal airplane. That made every trip super expensive to run, even before adding the fancy meals and drinks. Second, keeping Concorde in top shape was very hard. Since it flew so high and so fast, Everything had to be checked again and again. Every bolt, wire, and part. It needed constant care, like a race car that couldn't afford even a small mistake. Third, it couldn't carry many people. Only around 100 passengers could fit in the plane. That's way less than a normal jet. So even if the tickets cost thousands of dollars, it was hard to make a profit. In simple words, Concorde looked amazing. But behind the scenes, it was just too expensive to keep flying. The crash that changed everything. Then came a terrible day, July 25th, 2000. An Air France Concorde was getting ready to take off from Paris. Everything seemed normal at first, but just as the plane sped down the runway, something small but deadly happened. A piece of metal had fallen off another plane and was lying on the ground. The Concorde ran over it. That tiny piece of metal caused a chain reaction. It tore one of the tires, and the flying rubber hit the fuel tank. The tank broke open. Flames burst out. Within seconds, the Concorde crashed into a hotel nearby. Everyone on board, 109 people died. Four more were killed on the ground. The world's most prestigious aircraft crashes. More than 100 people are dead. The whole world was shocked. 
How could something so small bring down one of the safest jets ever made? Suddenly, Conquer didn't feel magical anymore. It felt unsafe. That crash marked the beginning of the end for Concorde. Too loud, too fast, too expensive. Even before the crash, Concorde had problems that couldn't be ignored. One big issue? The noise. When Concorde flew faster than sound, it made a huge sonic boom, like thunder. It was so loud it could shake windows and scare people below. Because of this, many countries banned it from flying over land. That meant Concorde could only fly across oceans, like between London and New York. Fewer routes meant fewer passengers and less money. Then came September 11th, 2001. After the attacks, everything about flying changed. People were scared to fly, airlines lost money, security became stricter, and fuel prices went up. For Concorde, this was too much. It was already expensive to run, and now it was even harder to fill seats. In 2003, both British Airways and Air France said they were done. Concorde was being retired. After 27 years in the sky, the dream of supersonic travel was over. Why Concorde really failed? Concorde didn't fail because it was a bad plane. It failed because it came too early, before the world was ready. It was a beautiful and powerful machine, no doubt. It could fly faster than sound and cut travel time in half. But it had one big problem. It wasn't made for most people. Only the very rich could afford to fly on it. It also used a too much fuel and cost a lot to keep running. So even with the high ticket prices, airlines were losing money. Yes, Concorde was a symbol of progress and pride. It showed what humans could create. But it just didn't fit into the real world. <laughs> In the end, airlines need to make money, not just fly fast. And Concorde, as special as it was, couldn't do both. A jet for the elite. Concorde was never meant for everyone. Millions of people flew on regular planes each year, but only a small group ever got to fly on the Concorde. The tickets were so expensive that only the rich and powerful could afford them. You could say it was like a flying palace, but for most people, the doors were always closed. Airlines started to look closely at the numbers. The high costs, the constant repairs, the fuel use, and the risks. And what they saw wasn't a dream, it was a problem. It wasn't just about money, it was about people. Concord was made for a world that didn't really exist. A world where everyone could afford to fly fast and high, but that world never came. So, in the end, it wasn't just the plane that didn't work. It was the idea behind it. Could it come back? Here's the big question, could a plane like Concord ever come back? Some people think it's possible a few new companies, like Boom Supersonic, are trying to build jets that go faster than sound, just like Concord. But they want to fix the old problems. They're working on planes that use less fuel and don't make as much noise. Today's technology is much better. We know more about engines, materials, and how to save fuel. That helps a lot. But the big challenge is still there. Can you make a plane that is fast, quiet, safe, and also affordable? That's not easy. Concorde had speed and style, but it was too expensive to keep flying. If the next generation of planes wants to succeed, they'll need all four. Speed, quiet, safety, and a price people can actually pay. A lesson in progress. The story of Concorde isn't just about an airplane. It's about big dreams and real life. Concorde was something special. It showed what humans could build when they pushed the limits. It was fast, beautiful, and ahead of its time. But that's the thing, sometimes the future comes too soon. And when the world isn't ready, even the greatest ideas can fail. Concorde was a flying wonder. It broke speed records and amazed the world. But in the end, money and rules caught up with it. It's a reminder that dreaming big is important. But those dreams have to work in the real world, too. Even the fastest jet ever built couldn't fly past the hard truth. If it doesn't make sense on paper, it can't stay in the sky. What we lost. When Concord stopped flying, it wasn't just a jet we lost. We lost a feeling. It was the feeling that the future had arrived. That we could do the impossible, like flying faster than sound. People used to look up, see that sharp white plane in the sky and feel amazed. Now, planes look the same. They fly slower. Trips take longer. And maybe, deep down, we miss that spark. That rush of wonder. What Concord gave us. Even though Concorde is gone, it left something powerful behind. 
It showed us what's possible when we dream big and work together. It proved we could fly faster than sound and break limits. Concord didn't fail, it was just ahead of its time. And sometimes that's what progress looks like. Final thoughts. The Concorde was bold, it was fast, and it was one of the most beautiful machines ever made. But in the end, it just didn't fit the world it was in. Too loud, too expensive, too soon. Will we ever see a plane like it again? Maybe. But next time, it will have to fly smarter, not just faster. It flew higher than the clouds, faster than sound. And now it lives only in memory. This was the story of Concord, the jet that touched the future, then vanished. If this made you wonder, like, subscribe, and hit the bell on Built to Collapse. Until next time, keep looking up. The sky still has stories to tell.